Okay guys, I'm back out here in my shop and on the last video I uh, made sure I said, you know, if anybody's got any questions, make sure you leave comments or email me or whatever. And boy did I get a bunch of questions. So I thought I'd kind of take a, a couple of minutes today. I'll try to make this a quick video. <coughs> um, I, I've cut and paste some of the questions here. Uh, uh, Willard, and I'm not sure how to pronounce your last name, so I'm just going to call you Willard P. It says, how long will a router run or work on a CNC? That's really a good question. I've got the same Porter Cable, Porter cable router that I had when I first started. I've had it for years. But I will tell you the story real quick. Is I was cutting one of these things. I don't know if you can see that good in there, all the detail. But this is a uh, Aztec Mayan calendar type thing. It's got a lot of fine detail engraving. And this is back when I had the, I was using my two-car garage as my shop, and I was had this thing running, and this is a good, you know, with all this detail, this is probably a couple hours, maybe three hour cycle time. And I was sitting in at my, uh, in my kitchen having a sandwich, but I could hear the, the router running outside, and I could tell it was starting to miss, or it sounded like something wasn't exactly right. So I ran out there, and just as the router did a you know did a head up move and was getting ready to move somewhere else I stopped it and as soon as I did the thing quit just stopped running so what I did and I'm going to show you guys how to do this you can actually write down your line number from your uh, program in Mach 3 and as long as you write down that line number you could come back a week from now and as long as you don't move your workpiece or anything don't move your machine you can actually start right back up where you left off so that's one thing I do want to show you. I probably won't have time to get into that today. But anyway, I remember I, when the router quit, I just hopped in the truck and drove to Lowe's, bought another router just exactly like this, finished the piece, so I ended up not losing all that time or wasting material running that. And what it turns out is the brushes, you know, these, these motors have brushes on either side here, and the brushes, I'd used it so much they wore out, so I basically just got online, ordered another pair of brushes, got that router fixed, and I can't remember which one's which. I think this is the newer one, and the other one is probably still working in my router table under there. So, how long will they work? I don't know. Uh, you know, the brushes will go out and they'll stop working, but you know, brushes aren't that much, and you can get them going again. Okay, another good question here. This is from Ken Burns. He says, uh, "What's your take on the need for limit switches and an emergency stop button?" How would you implement them in this design? Well, Ken, I can tell you, I have built close to, I don't know, probably over 100 different CNC machines uh, over you know, the last several years. Like I said, I, the one I have back there behind the camera, I used to build and sell. And I've never put a emergency stop or a uh, any kind of limit home switches, anything like that. I've never put them on there. Uh, one reason was because when I was selling them, I wanted to keep the cost down, try to make it where other people could afford them that wouldn't normally buy one. And if they wanted to add them, you know, they're more than welcome to add them to it. The, the controller is such where you can add, add on and do things like that. But personally, I've never felt the need for uh, any of them, either home switch, uh, limit switches. Uh, you know, I've been doing this stuff a long time, and I know when I program something, and if I set this zero where it's supposed to be, it's not going to run off the table or I'm not going to have to run over there and try to hit a stop. If I do need to stop it for some reason, whatever that might be, say a clamp starts coming loose and you know I can run over there and just click that. Uh, but most of the time, if I mean if you guys can see how I usually run my CNC, I usually clamp everything down, zero the machine out, fire it up, and I go off and do something else and let it run. You know, pretty much running unattended. Now a lot of times when I'm in the shop here I may be over here at the drill press or on my table saw or something like that and it's it's running I can I can hear it even though I've got the ear uh, earmuffs on uh, I can I can still hear it and I can tell a difference in the sound so but you know if you want to add uh, limit switches and an e-stop you know more power to you uh, I just never have felt the need for anyone on you know any of the machines that I've run, so uh, I just never bothered, bothered putting them on there. Okay, Patrick's Workshop. 
uh, wants to know if I can make something harder than a square. I guess the other little part was was a little too simple. So I've got something set up. We're going to try to run something here in just a minute. And also, David Rice says, how hard is it, is it to learn the Mach 3 software? And David, it's not hard at all. Uh, Mach 3 is really, for the money, it's a really powerful uh, control software. But for a simple CNC machine like this, you know, I probably don't use uh, you know 90% of the bells and whistles and things that it'll do. Uh, it, it does the job I want it to do, and there's things that uh, that I could probably learn if I uh, dig into that manual a little bit. But uh, you know, I just kind of use what I what I know works, and that's it. Uh, but no, a Mach three is not hard to not hard to learn. Really, like I said before, folks, any of this stuff is not hard to learn. It's really not. Uh, you know. So, okay, so I'm going to uh, set the camera up a little closer and we're going to try to fire this thing up and, and we're going to cut something out. Okay guys, got this uh, little gear cut. This is a uh, 38 tooth gear. And you can see that I've got it held in with uh, a couple of tabs. Where'd they go? Okay, yeah, right here and right here. So like I said, normally you can twist this and break it out, but a lot of times you'll get some more tear out and stuff. So usually I'll take it to the uh, bandsaw and cut it out. So I'll do that right quick. Okay guys, here's the uh, gear after I cut it up, uh, out from the skeleton and removed the tabs. This wasn't the best piece of plywood, I see it had a big void right here, so it's just a scrap piece I had laying around just to show you that what this thing will cut. But anyway, another thing you might be able to tell in this shot too is what I was talking about the other day, is how when I program, this is roughly half inch uh, plywood, actually I think it measures like 470, so I've got my program program to go down half inch so it's going to go the 470 plus another 30 thousandths and, and get into the spoiler board so that way you don't have any uh, little slivers or anything on the back and cut all the way through it except for where you leave your tabs and you get a nice clean, clean okay one last thing I wanted to talk about real quick in this video is I know I've got a lot of people uh, commenting and sending me emails and stuff saying hey when can we get those plans and uh, I am working on them. Uh, I've got all of them done except just a couple. And, and just to give you an idea, I don't know if you can see this, but this is kind of what you get. This is like a sub-assembly showing the gantry. It's got a list of all the components. I've got notes on here where you can get the components, whether it be McMaster car or dumpster CNC for the couplings and the Acme nuts and all that stuff. So, you know, I'm just absolutely making it as easy as I possibly can for you guys. Uh, you know, here's just a few of the sub-assemblies. There's the router mount. This is the table frame. Um, you know, so I am working on the drawings. I, should, I was hoping to have those up by the middle of the week. And, of course, today's Wednesday. And it doesn't look like I'm going to make it tonight. But uh, I should have them up for sure by the weekend. Uh, but I wanted to talk about uh, one thing. Because on a lot of these plans, when you download these plans, and these will, these will be on the website in a PDF format. And I've got kind of some basic dimensions on the parts themselves. 
I'm going to hold this up. I don't know if you can see it through that or not. But, uh, yeah, but I've got a note also on, on all of these parts where really what you want to do when you get ready to cut these out, unless you're using a CNC to cut them out, uh, if you're just doing them by hand, what you want to do is you want to download the zip file that I'll have up there that has full scale DXF, uh, DXF files. Now, DXF file is a vector file. You know, you use that to import to cut on CNCs and stuff like that. But also, what you can do is the file will have, it'll be full scale, but there won't be any title block or anything like that on it. So, you can either print it out yourself if you've got a printer uh, that you can use. Most people don't have a printer big enough. What I would recommend doing is taking that, those files, put them on a little flash drive, carry them to your local printer, and have them printed out. Uh, to full scale and get and just you know I don't know what it's going to cost you won't cost you a few bucks maybe to get get them printed out uh, but get them printed out full scale and then when you can actually you spray it easy spray on the back of it put it right on your piece of plywood and you know the the main thing is a lot of these things like these profiles here you know you don't really have to be that fancy you know you can cut this out on a bandsaw or scroll saw or whatever and get it as close as you can. But the main thing is, is not so much what the outside profile looks like, but the hole location and what makes your holes line up and things like that. And if you use those DXF uh, files as a template, a paper template, that will really help you to get very accurate, uh, uh, you know, transferring uh, these holes and things like that. So that's the way I would do it if I was going to make it the old-fashioned way. And uh, of course, once you get your CNC built, you won't ever have to do that again. You can use your CNC to cut anything out that, that's got a weird profile or whatever. But I did want to mention that. Like I said, I'll have those things up there sometime in the next few days. It's probably not going to happen tonight, but it'll, it'll be up there in the next few days. Uh, and, uh, you know, feel free to download them. Uh, you know, I, I do want to thank also, I've already had some people that have gone to my website and hit the, the little donate button I've got on there and, and, and left me some donations. Uh, you know, I really appreciate all that because that helps me to keep doing this kind of thing and, and not have to charge for plans like a lot of people do. I know there's a lot of guys on YouTube that, you know, draw up plans and stuff and then, you know, you go to your their website and, you know, they want to charge you 10, 15, 20 bucks or whatever. And I'm not saying the plans aren't worth it. I'm just thinking that, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to charge for plans. I would rather uh, just ask for donations if you use the plans and you think they uh, were, were helpful to you. Uh, you know, feel free to donate and, and I would sure appreciate it. Uh, anyway, I guess that's going to do it for this video. Uh, I'm trying, it's probably ran a lot longer than I thought it was going to. But anyway, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, uh, please do. And I want to thank all my new subscribers, and I guess we'll talk to you in a couple of days. Thank you.